The image on the wall vanished, and Cars laughed. <sighs> He's a vampire. What could my food source be plotting? Sending me a spaceship and Joseph Joestar's grandson. Eh? I'm adopted. Not actually related to Joseph at all. And it wasn't this mysterious vampire who put me on the H.G. Wells, but Tsuku Majuku. When I said so, Carl's white snake appeared in front of me, fist clenched. Oh, he's going to hit me, I thought. But I didn't even have time to brace myself. Wham! Not only did my face turn, but my whole body followed it, and I went spinning through the air. He hit me so hard it's a wonder my neck didn't break. It was probably a good thing I didn't brace myself. Going limp probably saved me. I'd better check your memories too, Carl said. White Snake pulled the disc out of my head and slotted it into Carl's. His relaxed tone belied the sheer force he'd used, but I lacked the energy to argue that point. My cheekbone appeared to be broken, and I couldn't touch it, and it was already super swollen. Both my shoulders were still injured, so I was pretty much hurting all over. I tried to squeeze the throbbing pain out of my mind and wonder why Tsukumajuku had brought me to Mars in the first place. I am your instrument. A person needs your help. I'll take you to them. That's all he'd said, but I still hadn't done anything here. All I'd done was meet Cars, and it sounded like he and Joseph Joestar had a history, but Cars couldn't be the person who needed my help. He wasn't a person. I thought that far, then I shook my head. Actually, my cheek hurt too much to shake, so I just did it in my mind. The reason I'd done nothing wasn't because the person who needed me wasn't here. I hadn't done anything because they hadn't tried to do anything. If I actually accomplished something, then that would be useful to whoever it was who needed me. The journey Tsukumajuku had given wasn't over yet, and it seemed like this space trip might actually finish within the four hours we'd been given. I had no idea why. Uh, Car senpai I said. The blood in my mouth made a gross sound and I nearly started coughing on it, but managed to stop myself and say again, Car senpai Sorry, um, can you heal me up? My body and head hurt so much I can't think straight. Cars didn't respond at all, so for a moment, just a moment, I managed to trick myself into turning to look at him. Even that slight movement felt like someone took a long harpoon and jammed it into my cheek and through my brain. With such force it ran up sticking two metres out the other side, and the pain of it left my vision blurry. But I managed to recover and see Cars enjoying my memories. He was just staring at empty space, but I think he was enjoying my colourful life. Yo! Kazi, don't ignore me! Kazi's eyes suddenly focused on me, and he grinned. You sure waste a lot of time on stupid puzzles. Nah, they might look simple from the results and solutions, but that was just the egg of Columbus, and actually getting there was pretty dang hard. I would have argued that point all day, but simply couldn't right now. I'd like to think faster, so if you could just heal me? In the end, you're just another human. Carl said, ignoring me again. You see a mystery and think, how odd, and put it on a shelf somewhere. Shut up. Even if I put things together after the fact, as long as I get there in the end, what does it matter? If I stopped to ponder every mystery I saw before collecting all the information I needed, I'd never solve anything. I managed to spit out. But was there any point in arguing advanced detecting with the ultimate thing? But to my surprise, Cars just said, Hmm. <sighs> Makes sense. And then notice my condition. Hmm. You could still think like that even without your memory disc. This isn't something learned through experience, but a creation of your innate intelligence. I see why they call you the deduction machine. I had a lot of ideas about where he'd pulled that from my memories, but that was an insult critics of the detective novel genre used to dismiss the presence of the detective character. But that didn't goddamn matter, so I summoned the last bit of energy I had and spit out. Heal me. And at last, Cars heard me. Heal you. Human healing is far too weak. It takes far too much time, he said, coming over and crouching down next to me, leaving my disc stuck in his head. Remember this. The heel button is right here, he said, and stuck his fingers just to the left of the crown of my head. But I couldn't actually see him doing this, and I couldn't stick my fingers in my own brain anyway. Then my brain went BAM, and suddenly inflated, then squeezed itself tight like it was pumping something downwards. And first the swelling on my cheek got way larger, and the bones started making scraping sounds like they were rubbing against each other. And the skin on my cheek came back, and the swelling was gone, and my bones moved back to normal, and everything was slim again. My cheek was healed in an instant, and then the swelling went down to my shoulders. BAM! Both shoulders went giant and round, and the runes yawned open but didn't hurt and didn't bleed. 
a sort of wind came from my body. And when that stopped, the runes were closed and the swelling went down, and my flesh and muscles and bones were connected right like they'd always been. After healing my shoulders, the swelling went all the way down the rest of my body like it was looking for other wounds and injuries to heal, and finally ended up at my ass where it came out like a fart. <laughs> I yelped, embarrassed, and jumped to my feet, but my body was entirely back to normal, and I felt better than I had in years, except that I was still too tall. Cars, sorry, can, can you put me back at my old height? <laughs> Isn't the view better? It wasn't bad to begin with, my clothes don't fit anymore, so I look like shit. You can always change your clothes, says the half-naked man. But I didn't say that, and Cars reached out and stuck his hand in my brain again, and a moment later, <coughs> my bones all broke the opposite direction from before, and then I was my old height again. Mmm. Good. I felt like my head was a little larger than normal, but it had always been on the big side. Okay, I said. Time to think. Cars, can I have the disc back? It's more effective if I look at it. <sighs> but they're my memories, I said, and since a third of the disc was sticking out of Car's head, I grabbed it and yanked it out. I was getting pretty bold. If he was going to kill me, it'd, it'd be over in an instant. That instant was always hovering over me, and I had no way of predicting what would cause that instant to arrive, so I just didn't give a shit anymore. Even after he healed my wounds, I couldn't exactly relax here. But as I was putting the disc back in my head, Carl said, I already found him. Who? That vampire. <laughs> Where? In my memories? Yes. Really? So I've met that vampire before? No. You simply saw a photo of him. Huh? When you were seven, you were looking at an album of old photographs in the old Joestar home, and it momentarily entered your field of vision. How the fuck was I supposed to remember that? I didn't even remember the album. Cars laughed at my dumbfounded expression. <laughs> like I said, your memories are more useful when I view them. Then Cars turned his mouth into a projector again, and displayed my memory on the wall. ka -chunk! A page of an album filled with black and white photographs. Kachunk! A close up of the largest photo on the page. It was apparently a picture from when the Joestars were living in America. It was a big house with what seemed looked like a large farmland outside. Three well dressed men were lined up outside the house. The middle aged man in the centre was sitting in the chair, and two boys stood beside him. All three were smiling. Kachunk! A close up of the boy on the left. Light coloured hair that looked soft to the touch. Long, narrow eyes, a sturdy chin, and full lips. Him. He had a pleasant expression, and he was still young, not fully grown, of a much slighter build, but it was clearly the same person who we'd seen floating in the air looking evil as shit. ka -chunk! The whole photograph displayed again. This time it also showed the note under the photograph. A caption, written in English, that said, 1881. Joe Star Estate, and three names arranged in an upside down triangle to match the positions of the three men. The middle aged man in the chair was George Joe Star, the boy standing on his right was Jonathan Joe Star, and the boy in question was labelled Dio Brando. Dio Brando. When I saw that name, it felt like a bolt of lightning ran down my back. 1881? That was 131 years ago. Jonathan was my great great grandfather. Joseph's grandfather. Joseph had apparently not gone on well with his own father, Jodo Joestar, who was apparently a gloomy man of few words. It was hard to tell what he was thinking, the exact opposite of Joseph, who for better or for worse was always bullshit free. But he often mentioned his grandfather with something approaching reverence. A gentleman, kind-hearted, handsome, and so athletic he played rugby with the young men until quite late in life. If he was with Jonathan as a boy, this bearded man in the chair, George Joestar, was most likely his father, the Georgia of six generations before me, albeit of no blood relation. Another George Joestar, I thought, and remembered what Tsukimajuku had said. In my world, there is another George Joestar. Had Tsukimajuku's friend been this middle-aged George? No, that didn't fit. Tsukimajuku had simply claimed to be from a world where it was July 23rd, 1904, 23 years after his picture was taken, or even more. The world he'd come from had had a completely different map. A hundred years wasn't enough time for all the continents to fuse together. Or was it? 
Look at what was happening to Morio and Nero Nero Island. Sprouting six legs like that would hardly be enough, I guess. But was it really out of the question that all the continents had moved that quickly and made the world we lived in? And that world history had chosen to keep that fact a secret? Wait, wait, I thought. I already knew that I didn't need to think in terms of the history I was living in. I looked at Cars. This Cars was the original Cars. Because he was the ultimate thing, he'd failed to die as the universe ended, and had gone through the beginning and end of the universe 36 times, collecting another 36 extra cars and 37 Giotto space probes. So the world was repeating history in a very similar fashion. Was this what Nietzsche had named the eternal recurrence? The concept of history repeating itself occurring in actual fact over a substantially larger time span? then it made far more sense to assume Tsukumajuku had come from a world in one of the previous 36 universes, and the discrepancies in the world map had been caused by the accumulated efforts of minor differences in the way history unfolded. Okay, so the George Joe star Tsukumajuku had been friends with was a George Joe star from one of those previous universes. And if Tsukumajuku was right, and that George had spelled his name J-O-R-G-E, then differences in my own timeline had led to that name being applied six generations later to the Japanese boy adopted into the Joestar family. Me. Although my name was still officially spelled Joji. That seemed a bit forced. I mean, I was adopted, I thought. Similarities or differences might arise within history, but that was always within the Joestar bloodline. None of that had anything to do with an adopted son. But anyway, Dio Brando. I knew nothing about him at all. Cos, do you know what connection this Dio Brando has with the Joestar family? I was a detective, yet here I was asking someone else about my own memories. Oh well, maybe I wasn't a great detective. Given the current course of events, it seemed unlikely I'd ever end up gathering everyone connected to the, this place in one location and explaining my solution to them. Oblivious to my internal shame, Carl simply answered the question. He was adopted by the Joestar family. As Dio Joestar, he died in a train accident in 1889. Adopted? Just like me? Cars' mouth turned into a projector again, showing us. ka -chunk. This time the picture moved, and Cars' ear turned into a speaker so we could hear. I hadn't heard Grandpa Joseph's voice in a while. I was a fidgety child, and the image rarely focused on him for long. I wasn't interested in his story. It was his bedroom, and I was sitting on Joseph Joestar's bed. He said, My grandfather Jonathan was a hero. He died trying to stop his adopted brother from robbing a train. Dee was an even bigger piece of shit than my father. If they hadn't taken each other out, I'm sure Jonathan would have raised my father properly, and he'd have made this family even greater than we are. Dee must be Dio Brando. So detested, Joseph refused to even say his name aloud. But a train robbery? The Joe Stars were titled aristocrats, wealthy even by the standards of English citizens. What the hell happened? I could see why the Joe Stars would want to keep this history secret. But if he'd really died then, he couldn't have been in the sky over Cape Canaveral in 1999, throwing a metal plate at Poochie's house. When had Dio become a vampire? Once you'd become a vampire, you could hardly live in polite society. Then again, the kind of man who'd plan a train robbery probably didn't give a shit about polite society. Cause... You conquered sunlight using the stone mask with the stone, red stone slotted into it, right? Are vampires also weak to sunlight? Shifting his mouth back to normal, Carl replied, Of course, vampires can't last a second in sunlight. We, the species I once belonged to, could operate for a brief period of time in sunlight and could turn our bodies to soil or metal, or burrow into rock, and survive, pa survive partial exposure to sunlight. I assume you're thinking about Dio Brando? Yes, but... Vampires have powers humans can only dream of. They can heal very quickly, have heightened senses and physical strength, but they don't have wings. They can't fly, but in the photo, he was hovering in the air without rings. In 1999, this Poochie fellow had not yet discovered his stand, and Fush could not see it. But this vampire almost certainly has a stand or some similar power. Yeah, 
and a vampire with that kind of power had waited a hundred years to put some massive scheme in motion. Making a fake way to heaven to get Pucci moving, sending him to Mars, or to lead Cars the ultimate thing back to Earth. Wait, I thought, and glanced at Cars, who was grinning at me. <laughs> it seems this lonely vampire has the nerve to take a run at me. He must be very confident in his stance ability. I suppose it was a stroke of luck the astronauts who came to Mars were Stan Masters. That allowed me to learn about Stans before returning to Earth. It appears Stan Powers could ignore the laws of physics, so he might have been able to drop me in a trap I could never have expected. He could perhaps have sent me out into space again without even touching me. But now I'm ready for him. When we reach Earth, I'll begin by conquering all Stan Masters. Carl said, clearly enjoying himself. I remembered what Rohan had said. Stan Masters find themselves drawn to one another like a magnetic attraction. I already knew of one place with a great number of Stan Masters. It was floating in the middle of the ocean. Morio and Nero Nero Island. The two of them were currently overlapping, and the two islands were surrounded by the American army. He said if nothing changes, the American army will flip the island. The message given to Hiroz Koiji. Why was America trying to eliminate Morio? Did America somehow know that the ship with cars on it wouldn't be landing there in six months, but four hours? The commander-in-chief of the American army was the president, the funniest Valentine. His father, Funny, had just tried to kill all the other astronauts on the dark side of Mars. That was clearly part of a strategy to grab cars for their own devices. Had the HG Wells blowing up been scripted, and the plan be for Funnier to be like we were now, on a ship with cars, quietly returned to Earth without the other nations knowing? If Funny Valentine had given Hiroz that message because either he was in on his son and grandson's plan, or because he disagreed with it, that made a lot more sense. Hmm, I was sure of it. America knew Cars was coming. They might not yet know that Funny had been blown up on Mars by Narancia, and might believe it was him on board this ship with Cars, but the army was waiting for this ship to land on Earth. And since he was the ultimate thing, it was safe to assume they'd be well prepared. A standmaster like Funny might survive it, but an ordinary citizen like me could easily die in the chaos. Crap! I ran over to Narancia, who was still bound to the ceiling, and grabbed the pebble phone out of his back pocket. I hit redoll. At last, Shibana Haruno answered. Yes? Hello, I said in Japanese. This is George Joestar. Oh, what is it? I was wondering what's going on down there. I see. Good timing. I needed to call you myself. Did you find Diabolo? No. About the state of affairs here. An hour ago, the American army ordered us to leave these waters. Thirty minutes ago, they gave us a final warning. And a moment ago, an American Air Force scout plane inexplicably broke apart in the sky over Morio and crashed. Villagers went out to rescue them, clashed with naval forces, and are now fighting. We expect they'll start bombing Morio and Nero Nero Island any moment. So we've ordered all civilians from both islands to hide underneath Nero Nero. But we still haven't figured out how to control Nero Nero. So if it starts moving across Morio again, everyone will have to move along with it. Not ideal, but our best available option. We are continuing the hunt for this serial killer, Kira Yoshikage, but no likely suspects have been found. And once America attacks, the chaos will make continued investigation nigh impossible. He rattled this all off calmly. But what? Fighting? Villagers in the Navy? Only standmasters stood any chance of fighting the Navy, but even then people of outstands the world over would see the American soldiers aiming their guns at unarmed Japanese citizens. How is the international community allowing this? Bombing? The American attack? How is any of this insane crap happening? I could only assume all of this was being kept secret from the world at large. As if he'd guessed my reaction, Shiaban added, They've told everyone that terrorists have taken over Morio and Nero Nero, and that the villagers have been dripping mad with a weaponized virus, and the terrorists made them attack the Japanese and American soldiers who came to rescue them. Huh? There are actual reports of patients in Sardinia and the Tohoku region of Japan going berserk and attacking people. Their symptoms are contagious and the number of victims is rising. It's like a zombie movie. The dead pipe people and those bitter who come in contact with their saliva turn and attack other humans. 
I suppose the key difference from the movies is that there are rumours of flying zombies. At any rate, the world is in a state of panic, and everyone believes Morio and Nero Nero Island are the source of the epidemic. They have been told the island set out into the ocean so that they can carry the zombie disease to other lands, and an International Emergency Safety Council meeting is being held to decide the fate of the islands. Satellite weapons are already arranged above us, and we believe they will be used to blow these islands away. We have to figure out a way to control these islands before that happens. I don't even... Zombies? Flying zombies? Since when did things like that exist? When I said nothing, Shibanus asked, By the way, where are you in the rancher? Eh? Uh, out of space. Huh? Could you put the rancher on? Oh, sure, I said, and handed the phone up to the rancher, who immediately railed, Jono, it's me! God damn it, listen! And with tears running down his cheeks, he began explaining everything that had happened. I staggered a few steps away and saw cars grinning at me. It's possible the stand masses you want to conquer are about to be wiped out, I said. Although that might well not happen. Stand powers are pretty amazing after all. They might well be able to withstand the American army's attack. But I was worried. Cars chuckled. <sighs> if you're worried, then you'd better save them. Could he read my mind too? If I could do that, this would all be easy. Have you actually thought to see if there's anything you can do? Human minds move so slowly, and you lack perseverance. Always giving up so easy. What? I wasn't a stand master. I was an ordinary human. I opened my mouth to say as much, but thought better of it. Cars wouldn't say something like that unless he already had an answer in mind. In other words, Cars knew there was something I could do. There was something I could do I just hadn't noticed yet. I would if I thought about it. If my reason for being helpless was that I was an ordinary human, then I needed to do something about that. I just meant I wasn't the ultimate thing or a standmaster, but I just had to change that. I could change that. Behind cars, Enrico Pucci was lying on the floor, still badly hurt and breathing ragged. He was glowering in outer space, deep in thought. His stand, white snake, two discs, it could take out a stand power, the same as reading the memory discs. If you stuck a stand disc in your head, would that make me be able to use the stand like we'd just been reading memories? Cars, I said. Can I borrow the disc of your stand power? Cars laughed out loud. <laughs> Bold move, George Joestar. I thought you were going to ask for my help, but you prefer to do something yourself. Eh? Oh, was that all? If he was willing to do it for me, then by all means. But Cars was sure a white snake was already out, and pulling two discs out of Cars head. White snake and dust boot. But white snake was still standing behind Cars. Huh? I thought. It's a copy. Cars said. He really could do anything, I thought, and took the discs from him. I shoved one of them into my head. As I did, Cars said. But can a mere human use my power? Oh shit, I thought and everything went black. I'd exploded.